Susan, let's dive into the core of our conversation today, which is a huge topic. We're talking about this huge wealth transfer, this transition of money um, from traditionally a male-dominated world of finances and money to where more and more women are taking the lead taking the reins, taking the control in finances and money, both within their households as well as personally. And it's a huge, huge shift. So I just wanted to ask you first and foremost, have you seen this out in the world? Have you heard about this with friends, with family? Um, How has it impacted your life? I think as I've become like a a financial adult, which is a great term, I think we need to embrace more. And and it took me, you know, through my 20s, which I think is probably pretty normal um, to realize that like, oh, I have to like manage this. I have to get on top of this. And and I think that my, as I've done that, I've got married. I'm, I am for sure the CFO of our family. Um, I'm training my husband up on the accountant position. It's open, <laughs> open for, open for jobs. So, um, so he's, he's doing a lot of that stuff, but I'm the one making the high level decisions. And, and we just defaulted into that because I'm mm. the one that thinks in that way. And as I talk to more of my friends, it turns out that a lot of the females, at least in sort of a heterosexual relationship, are the ones that are thinking about finances or that are managing their money in a certain way. And it has, I have thought, I remember thinking to myself, like, interesting, because when we went and saw that initial financial advisor, they were talking to Adam. They weren't talking to me the whole time. And when I think about like, when I look at sort of investing images and products and, you know, your typical stock market, and it's just a bunch of white males and suits with a token female in there, right? And so there's this, this like, interesting, that's not my experience in reality, but I have such a small sample size that it's easy for all of us to think that like, oh, maybe you know, this is just me, or maybe this isn't the norm, but it's true. I mean, the statistic that this article that were, were kind of really piqued Annie and I's interest here is that among married women, 30% more of them were making financial and investment decisions in 2020 compared to just five years earlier, a 30% increase in just five years, um, as of recently. And that's a huge, just, you know, a statistic that points to that women are taking on the reins of making the financial decisions in their in their families and married couples, at least. Gosh, it feels so good to know one that this is happening; that more women are taking control. Women are making more money than ever before. There are more women in the workforce. There are more women starting businesses, and in general, just out in the world. And so it's, it's very exciting to see that. And it normalizes my experience to know that I'm not alone in sitting in that room with a financial advisor and feeling like, Ugh, I don't belong here. I, you know, I'm out of my league. I shouldn't be here, but knowing that it's not me, it's not me. The system was not designed for people like me. And that's something that's thankfully it's changing now. People are learning more how to connect with women and to advise women, to support women as they take more control of their finances. But it just helps to know that, oh, thank goodness, there wasn't something wrong with me that I didn't know the answers to all those questions or I didn't feel like I belonged in that room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's like there's some catching up to do. Like all of a sudden women are becoming leaders in the in the home in terms of finances, whether they make more, they manage it, they are the ones who, who decide. And I mean, I I think that's too, like I ignored it for a while too. I was a saver, which means I didn't accrue a lot of debt, thankfully, but I was not, I did not understand investing. I I mean, I had even a vague sense of budgeting. I definitely got surprise expenses, like yearly stuff that I just couldn't plan for very well. And I got to a breaking point, speaking of like my little anxiety center and my imagination went haywire. I mean, it was like financial anxiety took over that anxiety center. And so I I like took things over at that point where I think that was my nature of like, we've got to like take this and run with it and have a plan and invest. And so I think that's how I stepped into that role. But yeah, as as more women are are 
continuing to like step into this role, Mm -hmm. the industry has to like step up to help us in different ways. And I just love that like, there is this acknowledgement of that, like things can, we can look at money and investing and finances differently. And it, and it, maybe it's a sort of the feminine side of our brain. Maybe it's a masculine side of our brain that has been dominating it before. And I say that specifically because, you know, it's not just a gender thing too. I I think there's probably a lot of men out there who don't see money and finances the same way as other men, because maybe they look at it through a different lens that maybe we'd categorize as feminine. I, for example, like looking at the emotions behind investing and how that drives our behavior and our behavior drives our actions and our actions drive the results. So if we're looking, if we're ignoring the emotion side of it, that was like taking a huge piece of that puzzle away and it may not have fit together for people in the past. And certainly like for a lot of women, I think they need to understand those, those elements of, of money. And supposedly this is going to get easier for all of us. When women learn a new skill, they change and transform an entire community because then they go and they teach it to their kids. They teach it to their spouse. They teach it to their friends. And suddenly you have this, this natural wave of change because women always love to share. And so that's a huge one. I think bringing money out into the open and talking about it and not making it so taboo. I mean, even, you know, I'm a money person professional. Like this is what I do. I do finances and real estate investing. And even when I get together with my friends, I feel a little awkward bringing in Mm -hmm. the money into the conversation. So I know if I'm feeling that way, everybody else must be feeling that way too. And so I think this, this transition, this wave will start to bring money into the light a little bit more rather than in the dark corners where it's been for so many generations, but bringing it out into the open a little bit more. And that makes it not so scary of a topic. And it also makes us all feel a little bit less alone in the money worries and the money stresses that we may be experiencing. And I think that makes a huge difference on an emotional and a spiritual level. And then I think, you know, as they say, money doesn't change who you are, it amplifies who you are. And so, you know, I I know so many women who have this just hunger for impact and they want to make a difference in the lives of their families, their kids, but also their communities. And I think the more that we can empower women with that financial education and equip them to make take these actions the more that it's going to um, have that ripple effect. And it reminded me of one exercise I want to leave the listener with. Um, And this is a kind of a, this is not from inside out, but this is something that I learned many years ago, actually from a podcast at a critical juncture when I was making a big decision in my life. And you can use this exercise for anything, especially if it relates to um, something you're feeling anxious about or fearful about or unsure about. So it can be something as small as, you know, wanting to buy something that you're not sure if you should spend the money on or buying that house, something bigger, right? Or making that first investment, um, something that can be very scary. And so the basic premise, take your paper, whether physical or virtual, you're going to divide it into three parts. And um, the three parts are going to be fears, opportunities, and strengths. And so let's say, for example, you're feeling anxious about making your first investment. First, you're going to list all your fears. Those are going to come easy. That's from the anxiety projections that you're probably already running in your head. So you're like, oh my gosh, I could lose money. I could look like an idiot. I, my husband could get mad at me or I could lose my kids college savings. You know, all these, I might have to move back home with my parents. You know, all these things that you're probably already thinking, just write them down, type them down, jot them down. And then you've got your list of fears. Often what happens when you do this exercise is because those fears are so huge in your head, when you write them down in paper, it makes them much more manageable because you're like, oh, 
is that really it? That's that's what I'm scared of. But then you don't stop there because fears is only the first part. The next is opportunities. So then you put the fears aside, you close the projector, you turn off the projector for a second and you say, okay, but if I do this thing, if I make this first investment, what are the possibilities? What could this open up for me? This is where joy comes in and takes over. Mm-hmm. And she starts to say, oh, these are all the amazing things that could happen in your life. You, this might be the first in a whole series of investments that you could make. This could put you on the path to retiring early. This could help you triple your kid's college savings. This could help you buy more houses or move to that place that you've always wanted to live in. All these possibilities that have been squashed because your fear projections have been so huge in your mind. So that's the opportunities. That's the second part. And then the third part is this part is the part where you focus on you. And because a big part of making it your first investment, yeah, it's about the money, but really it's about investing in you, yourself, your own possibilities, your own skill set, your own knowledge, your own wisdom. And so that third part is listing out your strengths and reminding yourself why you are so capable of doing this thing. I'm pretty good with numbers or I've, I'm all, I always do my dil- due diligence before I get into something. I always bounce back even when I fail. I believe in myself. All these strengths that are hard to remember when you're scared of something, but it's good to, this is why you're dividing it into three equal sections, because then you look at that paper and you say, okay, I have these fears. I acknowledge them, but guess what? Look at all these opportunities that I have. If I get out of outside of my comfort zone, I try this thing. And here's why I believe in myself. Why I think I can do this. And by doing this, you give yourself, you really equip yourself to take action. Whereas if it continues to swirl in your head, you might be stuck in that analysis paralysis. <laughs> 